Alright folks, welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. So we're going to pick up where we left off. This is the problem we're going to try to solve. We're tasked with finding the surface integral of x squared ds over a unit sphere. So first thing you want to do is, in any uh, surface integral problem, you want to parameterize, parameterize the surface. So in this case, our surface here is S, this unit sphere. To parameterize it, we're going to start by considering spherical coordinates as usual. We consider a point P on spherical coordinates. And this point is making an angle of theta with the x-axis and an angle of phi with the z-axis. So since this is phi, alternate interior angles means this angle is also phi. And since this radius here is rho, I have this one, this z being rho cosine phi, and this, this xy plane projection is what? Rho sine phi, right? Rho sine phi. And so that means my x projection of rho sine phi is going to be what? Rho sine phi cosine theta. Rho sine phi cosine theta. This is something you should never memorize. Uh, derive it every single time you need it. So this is your x projection, this will be your y, and this is your z. So for your y projection, uh, I should probably do it in a different color, but we'll use our yellow color when it's necessary. This is rho sine phi, this is theta, so this has to be rho sine phi sine theta. And if you want to check, you can see that x is cosine theta, y is sine theta. This all makes sense. And so, since this is a unit sphere, we have rho equals 1. And so our parameterization is going to be what? It's going to be, let's use yellow now, uh, r of phi theta is equal to my x coordinate, my y coordinate, and my z coordinate. Uh, no rho because that's just one and so we're just going to have cosine cosine of theta cosine of theta cosine of phi okay so now we have rho now what are we going to do we're going to find our two tangent vectors what does that mean well if you take a little a little uh, a little slice here and take another slice you want to find two tangent vectors and by finding the cross product you can get the unit normal vector and that you know, unit normal vector is going to define this tangent plane to our surface at that point. So how are we going to find that tangent plane? Let's start by differentiating r with respect to its two uh, parameters. First we're going to do r uh, sub phi. So r sub phi is going to be cosine phi uh, cosine theta and cosine phi sine theta oh, sine theta so I'm saying one thing and I'm writing another and different uh, derivative of cosine of phi is minus sine of phi and we do the same thing but now with respect to theta right so we're going to have sine phi actually minus sine phi uh, minus sine phi sine of theta Y minus, well, because derivative of cosine theta is minus sine theta. Same thing here, sine of phi cosine of theta. And lastly, this is just zero with respect to theta. Now, before you move on, you want to make sure you did everything correctly. R sub phi, is that actually cosine phi? Checks out here. Is that cosine phi here? Checks out here. And is that minus sine phi here? Checks out here. R sub theta, is that minus sine theta? Checks out here. Uh, cosine theta checks out here and this is of course zero because it's a constant with respect to phi so it is indeed zero. Now we're going to take the cross product of our two tangent vectors so uh, the cross product we want to actually find the magnitude of the cross product not just find the cross product so that's going to give us so we're going to write down all of these cosine phi cosine theta cosine phi cosine theta cosine phi sine theta, cosine phi sine theta, minus sine phi, minus sine phi, oh, no, not theta, 
Again, I said phi and I wrote theta. So minus sine phi. And for our r sub uh, theta, you want to write down mi minus sine phi, minus sine phi, uh, sine theta, sine theta, sine phi cosine theta, sine phi cosine theta, and 0. OK, so this one, by the way, was r sub uh, phi, and this one was r sub theta. This one is uh, this vector, and this one is that tangent vector. And on the top, we're going to have i hat, j hat, k hat, right? So let's go ahead and uh, compute the cross product. i hat is positive, j hat is negative, and k hat is positive. So what are they going to work out to be? Let's see. So i hat, this diagonal is 0. This one is minus, uh, let's see, minus, uh, minus sine phi, OK, times sine phi cosine theta. J hat, we block this. This diagonal is 0. This diagonal works out to be sine. Um, this diagonal is 0, so we have negative. Negative and negative make positive. So we have sine phi sine phi, sine phi sine phi, uh, sine theta. And finally, for k hat, we have uh, something pretty nasty. Sine phi, cosine phi, cosine theta, cosine theta. So sine, sine phi, cosine phi, and cosine theta, cosine theta. So cosine theta. OK, that's the left diagonal. And for the right diagonal, it's gonna, we're going to have minus and minus is going to make us plus. And cos, sine phi, cosine phi, sine phi, cosine phi, and sine theta, sine theta. OK, so we're halfway done. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Uh, let's take the magnitude of that, or let's first simplify it. r sub phi cross r sub theta <coughs> is going to be what? We're going to have si sines minus sine squared phi minus sine squared phi cosine theta. That's our i hat component. Our j hat component is going to be sine squared phi, because minus and minus to make positive. Sine squared phi, sine theta. And our k hat component is going to be what? If you look over here, you're going to see we have uh, sine phi, cosine phi, cosine squared theta, and sine phi, cosine phi, sine squared theta. So we're going to have sine phi, cosine phi. We factor that out, and we're going to have, uh, actually, we're going to have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And uh, who doesn't love that? Because that is 1, is just 1. So we're going to have what? If I take the magnitude of this, what am I going to get? So the magnitude of this is going to be the square root of, so square this, what, what do you get? You'll get sine to the fourth phi cosine squared phi, sorry, cosine squared theta, plus sine squared theta, oh, sorry, sine to the fourth theta, uh, sine to the fourth phi, uh, sine squared theta, sine squared theta, uh, plus, right, uh, you square this, that gives you this, square this term, you get this term, and our last term squared is going to give us sine squared phi, cosine squared phi. So now let's see if we have anything in common. We have uh, sine to the fourth phi, sine to the fourth phi, cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. Again, we notice we can factor something out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to factor out sine to the fourth phi here. And I'm going to, inside, I'm going to have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. As usual, that's, that works out nicely. And plus, we have sine squared phi, cosine squared phi. So sine squared phi cosine squared phi. So this is, of course, nothing more than 1. And so we're left with the square root of sine to the fourth phi plus sine squared phi cosine squared phi. And so if I go ahead and factor out something here, if I go ahead and factor out sine squared phi, I'm going to be left with, I'm going to be left over with sine squared phi 
plus cosine squared phi. And so this is also 1. And so let me just, OK, let me slow down, make sure I did everything right. So the square root of sine squared phi is nothing more than sine of phi. And so now we can finally come back to our integral and rewrite this. So we can write the, the double integral of x squared dx, x squared ds. Okay? So what are we going to have? So here we, we know what x is. What is x? x is just the x component of our parameterization. It's sine phi cosine theta, sine phi cosine theta times ds. And ds is uh, just no more than sine phi. Sine phi. That's the magnitude of our cross product times d phi d theta. And so what's going to happen? Phi or phi is, is going to go from 0 to pi, and theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. This is something that students often mess up with. They put 2 pi for both, but that's not the case. If you look at the 3D version, you're on, you'll understand why. So I have sine phi, sine phi. So let me go ahead and uh, bring that over to one side. So I'm going to have the integral of 0. Oh, I think I made a mistake. I made a mistake. This should be squared, right? Because I have x squared. So this should be squared. OK, good. So I'm going to have sine cubed phi, uh, d, d phi, or d phi. Uh, and phi goes from 0 to pi. And the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and we can separate these integrals because they're variable separable uh, of, what do I have, sine cubed phi. And this is going to be cosine squared theta. And so now this is just a matter of integration. If you know how to integrate basic functions, you should be able to do this. Let's go ahead and, and, uh, and do this. So first, cosine squared theta is what? Well, recall that cosine of 2x is cosine squared x minus sine squared x, right? It's a hyperbolic function. And so to fi figure out what cosine 2x is, uh, to cosine squared x is, let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side. So sine squared x is just 1 minus cosine squared x. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to have cosine squared x plus cosine squared x. That gives me 2 cosine squared x minus 1 is equal to cosine 2x. So that means cosine squared x is cosine 2x plus 1 all over 2. So that means I can replace that here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine. Actually, let's write it nicely here. So half, I'm just breaking up this fraction, half plus half cosine 2x. The, actually, this should be theta. So this should be theta. OK, good. So let's go ahead and uh, integrate here. What am I going to have? So integration, uh, integral of half is just theta plus integral of cosine 2 theta is sine 2 theta, but divide by 2 because of the chain rule. So you're going to have sine 2 theta over 4 from 0 to pi. Okay. And now let's do this one. Uh, what about the left-hand integral? Okay. Let's do the left-hand integral. So this one, the trick here is to break up, break up sine cubed phi, phi, phi uh, into sine squared phi and sine phi, uh, d phi uh, plus. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Well, instead of sine squared phi now, just replace it with 1 my So it seems like we're running out of space. So let's come over here. Uh, let's, I can use this space. So here, I can write, let's use a different color. I can write from 0 to pi. Instead of sine squared phi, I can write 1 minus cosine squared phi. And you might think, how does that help? Well, you're going to see very shortly that this actually <laughs> works out nicely if we use a u substitution for cosine of phi. So let's say u is equal to cosine phi. Well, then du over minus sine phi is equal to d phi, right? So if I go ahead and replace d phi here, d phi here by du over minus sine phi, those sine phi's and sine phi's cancel out. This minus uh, flips this into cosine squared phi minus 1. So what am I left with here? I'm left with the integral from 0 to pi of 1 minus, but cosine squared phi is just 1 minus u squared, right? 1 minus u squared du. But now we have to change the limits of integration because we changed our variable. So cosine of 0 is 1, and cosine of pi is minus 1. And so these 
limits of integration have to change from 0 to pi to 1 to minus 1. Uh, OK, so let's finish this off. This is going to be u minus 1 third of u cubed from 1 to minus 1. So this is the tricky part, because this is where most people will mess up, the, the simple arithmetic. So let's go ahead and do this quickly. So I will have, if I substitute in minus 1 for u, then I will have minus 1 minus 1 third of minus 1 cubed. And from that, I will subtract what, uh, what this expression is evaluated at 1. So 1 minus 1 third of 1 cubed. OK, and later we're going to add this part on. So what is this equal to? So minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 third times minus 1, uh, minus 1 minus 1 third. OK, so this becomes what? So minus 1 times this just makes it a plus 1. So I can forget about that. And 1 third minus 3 over 3 is just minus 2 thirds. Uh, hopefully I, I'm doing my arithmetic correctly. And 1 minus 1 thirds is just 2 thirds. 2 thirds. So here I'm left with, with minus 4 thirds. And let's come down to over here. So this part is going to be what? Plug in pi. Now notice uh, sine of anything that's a multiple of pi is just going to be 0. So you can just forget about that. And so we'll just have pi left over here. So pi times uh, 4 thirds, pi times 4 thirds, Th that should be 4 thirds, right? Mi not minus 4 thirds because it's a surface integral, so it should be positive. And so our final answer, is there a nice place to put it? Uh, maybe we can, apparently there's no nice place to put it. So this is our final answer, 4 thirds of pi. So for equations, as you can see, this is a very easy problem. You should be able to solve this in your head. We'll see you in the next one.